Hello, my name is Irene, Irena Joliot Curie. I was born on September 12, 1897, in Paris, France. My parents are Pierre and Marie Curie. I married Jean Frederic Joliot and adopted the surname Joliot Curie. My daughter Hélène was born on September 17, 1927, and my son Pierre on March 12, 1932. I demonstrated my intelligence and exceptional talent for mathematics from an early age. I started school at the age of six at the school of Cassini Street, but although it was the school closest to my home, it didn't seem very appropriate. At the age of ten, due to my abilities and interest in mathematics, it seemed that there was no suitable school for me in all Paris, so I studied at my own school known as the Cooperativa along with other children of prestigious intellectuals. My teachers included Marie Curie, Paul Langevin and Jean Perrin. I entered the Sorbonne University in October 1914 to study physics and mathematics. Due to the outbreak of the First World War, I left the university in 1916 to work as a radiological nurse, helping my mother save the lives of the many war wounded. I extended this work by directing the development of X-ray diagnostic devices at military hospital facilities in Belgium and France. After the war, I received the military medal. In 1918, I joined the staff of the Radio Institute as my mother's assistant. During this time, I completed my doctoral thesis on Polonian alpha rays, which I defended in 1925 at the University of Paris. My husband, at the suggestion of his mother, Paul Langevin, visited the Radio Institute a few months earlier, December 1924, to meet my mother. She invited him to stay as one of her assistants. I was in charge of teaching him the necessary techniques to work with radioactivity. In 1932, the year in which I began to work at the Faculty of Science in Paris, Frederick and I failed to interpret an experiment in which we irradiated paraffin using polonium that James Chadwick repeated and expanded and whose correct interpretation led to the discovery of the neutron in that year, for which I received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1935. Also, in 1932, we confirmed the discovery of the positron by Carl David Anderson. In 1934, we summarized our work in a joint article entitled Product to Artificial de la Monde. This article demonstrated for the first time the creation of artificial radioisotopes by bombarding boron, aluminum or magnesium with alpha particles, helium nuclei. Certain isotopes are unstable and emit radiation in their decomposition process, unlike natural isotopes, which are stable. Over time, it was found that any element that presented one or more stable types of nuclei could also present radioactive nuclei. Here's a picture of my mother, my sister and me. Look how little I was! This discovery would alter the way of seeing the periodic table and the relationship between the chemical elements. The concentration and isolation of these radioisotopes and their availability allow their use in medicine, research and in the manufacture of weapons. In 1946, I was appointed director of the Radio Institute, and in 1948, I attended the inauguration of the first French nuclear reactor, which ended with the Anglo-Saxon nuclear monopoly. On this year, I planned a tour of the United States to raise funds for Spanish refugees, and although my papers were in order and I had a visa, I was prevented from entering the country and taken to a detention center on the island of Ellis, until the French embassy was able to intervene. In 1955, I designed up the plans for new nuclear physics laboratories at the University of Orsay, south of Paris, where teams of scientists could work with large particle accelerators with fewer obstacles than in the Paris laboratories. But as everything that begins ends, now I have to say goodbye. This has been a small summary of my life. I hope you liked it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll go to the labs to investigate further. Bye-bye!